Welcome to the Virtual Getaway 2020. Today we will be talking from the perspective of a burn survivor. And today we have James Bosch, licensed and marriage family therapist. Welcome, James. Hi, Daniel. Glad to be here. Hi, Getaway. Uh, James, I just have two questions for you. We're talking about the burn survivor perspective in relation to the family today. And the first question is, what are some of the comments and concerns that you've heard from burn survivors as a therapist um, that they have mentioned about their family? Mm -hmm. Wow, big question, Daniel. I'll try to um, give you a perspective of what I hear from families I work with, especially the survivor's perspective. You know, um, we do know that when a family is involved in a survivor's recovery, the survivor usually does better. That's actually one of the few things in burn recovery that's been like researched and studied, and that's great. Not everybody has um, has that family there, right? And, and sometimes there's complications. One thing that um, is important is to think about is that everybody in the family system that's been affected by the burn is recovering or dealing with a different stage of acceptance around the injury or recovery from the injury in a different way. Uh, especially if the family member was the first responder, like they found the person, the survivor and helped them or got them help, or the family member has some kind of feeling of responsibility or guilt that um, they should have prevented that, I should have been there, or I left the I left that water boiling and walked out of the room, whatever, you know, and so there's all these complications and, and everyone's dealing with their own processes. And the survivor, um, you say, how, the question is what I'm hearing is what, how can the survivor ask and incorporate help from the family? And I think it's important to think that the survivor actually doesn't often know what they need at the time of their injury and when they're in the, the complicated stages of treatment or later. So I think the number one thing is um, from the survivor's perspective is to realize that everybody, including everyone struggling and that communication is gonna be key and it's often gonna be messy. So I think from the survivor's point of view, the, the more you, the survivor can um, speak their needs and speak their needs in a way that's you know clear and helpful and, and a thing that also that I find happens is that many times a survivor is sitting there in, in the bed or in the in rehab and, um, and all these family members and loved ones are coming to see them all awkward, all struggling, not knowing what to do, feeling bad. And the survivor becomes in this place of helping and trying to support everybody else. And the focus gets all off of them. So I think the important thing is to realize that, you know, is to encourage your loved ones and your family members, if you see them struggling to get the help they need, the family support group, the Burn Foundation does, the different um, services, therapy um, groups. And um, so, and realize that everyone has their own healing to do and to just keep the communication open. You know, this is uncharted territory. I was talking to a, a survivor the other day and their their parent and it's like they're like oh my god like this is like you know we we weren't trained to be astronauts and fly ships to the moon like this is such uncharted territory the complications in the levels of issues related with burn injury healing right so not just the healing but then you have okay stepping out of the hospital and our lives what is our lives now so um, I just think communication, realizing that um, you don't have to take care of everybody, you have to take care of yourself, and you can ask other people to take care of themselves. These are all such great points, James, and, and I think even redefining family has been what our, our mission is this year, part of our getaway experience, and really incorporating that family that we say to be anyone who's your supporter and anyone who's going to be that caregiver to you. So whether that's going to be a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a parent. Um, and we have videos that talk about all of these. Um, and I appreciate some of these points of, of just communication for the burn survivor perspective and what they can do of really just being honest with the family, right? Asking for help or asking for less help and just keeping or that. Like admitting that I don't know what to do here. 
and we yeah. need help. You know, like, um, you know, like, think about your family. Like, do you, did you grow up actually talking about feelings and having all these deep, like, recovery conversations and know how to do it? Probably not. And so all of a sudden you're expected to. So you realize that you're going to have to maybe get some skills and it's going to be a little messy. Um, I think another thing in the family systems that um, I often hear is this whole, the whole role reversal that happens. And so when, an, like, especially if an adult goes to live back with a family member or a friend or a loved one, and all of a sudden they're, they're dependent on everybody else for their needs, a husband that you, or a wife that was the breadwinner and now feel shame because they need to rely on everyone else. There's all these different levels of shifts of, um, of roles and perspectives. And, um, you know, and I think the most important thing is to try to work through the shame and the awkwardness of it and realize that everyone's struggling and, and everyone can work together to heal. Well, thank you, James, for sharing today and giving the perspective of a burn survivor. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for watching today's video. For more information on the Lisa Ann Roosh Burn Foundation, please visit our website at www.aarbf.org. Thank you.